Hey, how are you? My name is Emilio and thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, I work in technology and I absolutely love it. And we're gonna talk about some really cool stuff today. Before we do get into that, please remember as always to subscribe, clicking on that notification bell and on the button so that you don't miss out on anything. depends on the company whether the IT manager has staff reporting into them or not. Depends on the IT manager's responsibility level, whether you're just a standard IT manager, whether you're an operations manager, whether you're an infrastructure manager, whether you're a service delivery manager, perhaps you're an IT director, perhaps you're a CTO, a CIO. Your team size may be larger, may be smaller, but it's good to know the skills of your IT team. What skills do your IT team have? What are some skills that are lacking? Okay, this is something that is very, very important because if you are the sort of IT manager that wants to cast a vision for the next three to five years, you're writing up your strategy, you're keeping up to date with tech, you're proposing this, and then, hey, you get the okay. The boss says, yes, let's do that. Over the next two years, we want to implement this brand new system. And then you go to your IT tech and you say, hey, this is really exciting, huh? we're gonna deploy this brand new system. And your tech says, well, that's really nice, but I've got no idea how to manage that system. Well, you've got a problem. You've got to do one of two things. You either have to get that tech trained up to know that skill, that's even if that's possible, because what if they're super busy and they can't take on another piece of responsibility? Or, you need to now go and hire somebody new. So get yourself a skills matrix drawn up. List all of your resources, your tech resources, your non-tech resources, depending on the size of the IT team. If you're looking after managers, you write them down as well. And then write out all of the skills that you need as an IT manager to successfully manage all the IT systems and processes in an organization that you look after, All right? That be desktop support, that be servers, that be networks, that be development, project management, architecture, range of different things. List them all out, list the people's names, and then put a little cross, a tick, a unhappy face if they don't have that skill. Something that I find helpful is even sending the skills matrix out to the techs themselves, to your staff members themselves and have them fill it out. Why don't you tell me what you're comfortable in? Scale of one to 10, where is your comfort level in that particular technology, in that particular responsibility, in that process? Let me know. I'll then get it back and I'll grade it because generally techs will gonna rate themselves as, yes, I'm an expert at that. And then when you dig down a little bit, you find that they're not as much of an expert in that. So they may fudge the numbers a little bit but at least getting a good overall understanding of what your team looks like, then it makes it easier for you to understand where the shortcomings are. Where are the skill gaps that you now have the responsibility of filling? The last thing that you want is to go and implement a brand new system. And if you want your roadmap to become a reality, you need the right skills to be able to make that a reality. So you either need to invest in training of your staff get them trained up with specific things, or you may need to go and hire staff to fill these skills that are missing. Let's now look at the skills matrix, an example, a template that I formed. Now this is completely customizable to you, and you'll see that what I've got at the top is I've just got the heading saying skills matrix, the date, if you wanna make sure you have a current date in there or a particular revision of this, and then a simple symbol, uh, five level, five level um, essentially hierarchy around uh, one being none, two being basic, three being intermediate, four being proficient, and five being an expert or you're an SME, which is a subject matter expert. So the way that I've done this is I've got all of these different sorts of categories and then relevant technologies or skills that IT professionals will uh, generally or commonly have. And then the staff numbers, the actual staff member numbers themselves. So staff one, staff two, staff three, the names of the people, John Smith, Sue, and Mary, and then their relevant rating 
against that particular technology and that particular skill. Because what I want to see as a manager is actually see whether John Smith is proficient in Windows Server, uh, in Windows Server and Windows OS, if he's proficient in server patching, and then a number of other sorts of categories in here. And then this really then gives me a big snapshot on where my staff are at, essentially the staff that I'm managing, where they're at technically, where they're at with specific skills. Now, this list is completely customizable to you. You may not wanna include everything in here, but this sort of covers generally uh, somebody who would say would work in a level one, level two, level three in a support space. Um, there are elements here of development, but not so much. So if you do have developers in your team, you may wanna have a different skill set specific around development skills and languages that they may be familiar with. Uh, while this is more focused on the sysadmins, on the help desk, on the desktop support people, on the network engineers, those sort of people, okay? So what I've done is I've sort of categorized this into uh, Windows Server, so AD and server as well, uh, database, backup, storage, and DR, which is disaster recovery, virtualization, architecture, AV, so antivirus and monitoring. So this is all spam protection, email protection, all of that. Uh, then networking, this actually should say cloud. So I did, did, did just miss that out of there, but that is cloud network. And then you've got um, project management and service desk and then other. Okay, so we've got some you know, some standard categories in here around Windows administration, uh, things like, you know, things such as DNS, DHCP, um, Microsoft Exchange, Microsoft 365, if they have scripting experience, databases such as SQL, um, you know, Microsoft SQL, MySQL, Oracle, backups, storage, so if they're familiar with NAS and SAN and RAID, virtualization, of course, the big ones I've said in here is VMware, uh, Microsoft Hyper-V, Citrix Zen Server, and VMware SRM. And of course, if your organization has other sorts of virtualization technologies, you may want to add those in there because the whole point of all of this is to actually put the technology in here that are relevant to where you are working. So if you are responsible for being an IT manager in a company and they have specific technologies that they're, you know, they're, that, they're, that they're actually using, hardware, particular vendors of network devices, particular vendors of servers, particular software, you may wanna actually go and customize this uh, to something that is relevant to the organization that you are working. The same deal with cloud. So if you have uh, AWS, for example, you're using Amazon's web services, to some extent, but you're not even using Google Cloud, or you're not even using Microsoft Azure, then you may even just remove these altogether. You may not want to include these two in here at all because they're not relevant to your organization rather than you just keep uh, AWS. And then there's a few others there that are also good to know. We've also got some Linux stuff, we've got some Mac OS, you've got even project management if they're you know, familiar with ITIL for Service Desk, Prince, uh, Scrum, which are all project management methodologies and service desk stuff, and then a whole bunch of networking technologies if you so choose to. And then they've been graded from one through to five. So this is just something that I would say send out to a staff member. Staff member one gets it. They will then perhaps grade themselves. Or if you know them well enough and you've been working with them well enough, they, you can grade it for them. What I've commonly found is that a, a, a staff member generally will grade themselves higher than what they perhaps are. So then you can obviously go and tweak it. You can discuss it with them. But that is my overview of what a potential skills matrix could look like for the IT department. So that's it. Thank you so much for spending the time and taking the time to watch this video today. Hopefully you learned something new. Please let me know in the comments below what you thought. And as always, like and subscribe, clicking on my face right over there so that you don't miss out on anything on the subscription button so that you get notified when I release new videos around all things tech.